um, have stuffed animals, and I will want them. His life revolves around teaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my favorite thing to do is play baseball with my friends. Well, she's three and a half years old, and uh, you know, occasionally she'll get a cold, but she's healthy. Do you think your kids have an ear infection, a stomach virus? I certainly, from the get-go, was oblivious. Until they looked at me and said, your child has a brain tumor the size of a grapefruit, I, I had no idea. It's important to understand that when we treat a child with a, a tumor in the nervous system, that we're not just treating for a short period of time. I was just fearful because for the first time in my life, um, I had answers for everything and they had no answer for this. The treatment, yes, will involve surgery, it will involve chemotherapy perhaps, it will involve radiation therapy perhaps, but then the child is going to re-enter society with some special needs that, that weren't present before all this. We found out he had a tumor on Monday, he grew through his spinal cord on Wednesday, he stopped walking, just coincidence, and we went in for a massive surgery on Thursday. So that was almost, um, it was so fast that it was almost easier to process, but since then we've been living with a surgery to go in to debulk the tumor, I'd say like every two years, always knowing that there was this big surgery that may have to happen someday that we didn't really know if medically they were going to be able to do it. It takes a lot of people to take care of a child with cancer or a tumor. It's not the kind of problem that one physician or one uh, specialists can take care of in a comprehensive way. So the way we work together to make sure that every patient's getting the comprehensive care they need is by putting together what we call a tumor board. And essentially what that is, it's a weekly meeting where anyone that is a key player in figuring out how to best help a child gets in the room at the same time and looks at all of the angles of the case together to come up with a plan. In the Children's Hospital made my life back. Dr. Albert, Tanya, Dr. Moody, they are, oh my God, amazing person, me, my daughter. Um, it's unbelievable, I guess. Uh, today was the first time I saw her crawl, which was amazing to see. When I first met Shade, she was not able to ambulate at all and couldn't even sit up. Early in my career, I was impressed by what stress can do in a family vis-a-vis -vis the child's recovery. The child picks up their parents' stress and internalizes it, and that slows the recovery. So what we've done is bring in people into our team that can manage those problems. And as we deal with these stress points, what we see is that the child's recovery quickens. So the impact of this is that uh, we heal not only the child, but we also heal the family. Social workers can work with families to help them to understand those very common emotions and help to realize that they have they need time to try to accept what's happened to them and they need time to work with the team to understand what the process is to get their child healthy. Child Life offers um, two opportunities to kids while they're in the hospital with their families. One of them is more clinical where we teach children about their illness and about all the procedures that they'll experience as well as teaching them coping techniques for dealing with pain and anxiety. And the other part of our program is to keep them distracted from their illness as well as um, promote normal development. They had a doll named Fred. The play specialist would play act with her sort of what it was going to be like to have no, I remember that. Do you remember that now? Yeah. When you would have the tubes coming out of your chest? Mm -hmm. So so understand that it wouldn't be fearful for her that this was this is all normal, that she would have tubes coming out of her chest. Mommy would have to clean it, right? We'd have to rewrap yeah. your dressing, what it would be like for me to be wearing a mask. Um, remember yeah. remember Fred? Yeah. The the Morgan got, Morgan got to do the procedures on Fred. Yes. Through the playroom. The playroom was great. There was lots of play therapy, you know, he didn't know it was therapy, but he really was working things out. And then you would see what he was angry about and what he was scared about, and they did amazing things. And Laura, the art therapist, you know, she was great. You know, we were going through a lot, and they really made the effort to therapy. come every day and help us. Yeah, that was therapy. <laughs> he didn't know. The nurse practitioners are pretty much the glue on the team um, in the team approach of the care of kids with um, brain and spinal cord tumors. They really do a lot of coordination, family education, um, and really are the link between the families and the rest of the healthcare team. One night when I was really feeling down, Tanya left the hospital about 11 o'clock at night, uh, and I never went to bed, and literally she came back about 2.30 and said I need to see you in the hallway and pretty much gave me a speech saying that you've got to get your head out of the sand. And you got to get 
yourself together and you and your wife can pull through this, but you need to have a positive attitude. You need to believe that you can win and it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to lie to you, but we're here for you and you're going to fight the battle. And, and literally that speech, and I'm, and I'm making the speech soft. She actually used some four letter words that we're not allowed to use. <laughs> and uh, uh, that speech really turned around my my, my attitude. I met um, a young man when he was 11 years old and his diagnosis was of a brain tumor that really carried a very poor prognosis and his parents basically dismissed that and every step of the way with chemotherapy and radiation said we're just going to beat this, this is our challenge and 10 years later I attended this young man's wedding. If I met someone that was just diagnosed today I think there's a couple things I would say first of all obviously try to be as positive as possible for everybody. Every day is a new crisis when you're in a situation like this. But humor often mm -hmm. helped us through the day. Um, being positive and looking for the positive things that happened throughout the treatment was great not only for Morgan but for all of us. And we often would raise up the good that happened that day. And that certainly would catapult you through the next crisis because there always is one. Because these are serious, serious illnesses that are going on. Um, the other thing that's really important is looking for support and to not feel like you need to blaze your own trail and to go it alone. And most specifically to find other parents who have gone through it and find other kids that have gone through it because that will give you the most hope there is. Like I would hope that Morgan, someone seeing Morgan today, will, who just got diagnosed would be totally Absolutely. Thrilled. And I think they would be. Because I would have loved to have seen that. Absolutely. Sade came to us a year and a half ago. At the time, she was completely paralyzed from a tumor encasing her entire nervous system. We were able to eradicate her disease, and she's now learning how to walk. The real issue with Aiden has always been that he was not safe because of his spine deformity, and what we've been able to do is make him safe, make him be able to attend school. Having survived their illness, these children um, are now facing new challenges that we must help them meet. They have educational issues, they have physical issues, and they're things that we need to be constantly advocating for, but it's amazing that they're actually attending school and have the opportunity to be normal kids. When Morgan was first diagnosed uh, 10 years ago at age 2, we were told that she had about a 20% chance that she survived. When she relapsed at 4, we were told that she had a chance of long-term survival of somewhere between 1 and 5%. Well, pulling in today at Rye Playland, she was very excited about rolling the roller coaster, and uh, that was something I promised her that we would do. Well, I got my mom here on me and my TV. Yeah. I don't have a favorite animal. I like all animals equally. That's really all I think about is animals. 20 years ago, these children were not surviving, and now what we're seeing is that these kids are surviving and have the opportunity to be normal kids. They did tell me I couldn't play piano, and now I can.